Christmas Day is a great day to remember the incarnation, how God, the divine nature, takes on the human nature in human flesh in the little baby born in Bethlehem. It's God's Christmas gift to you, and that is the theme for this sermon from Galatians chapter 4, reading verses 3 to 7, Christmas gifts from God to you, the gift of his Son and the gift of his Spirit. Let's join the worshipers on Christmas Day 2023. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. God's word on this Christmas day from Galatians chapter 4, beginning at verse 3. So also when you were younger children, we were enslaved under the basic principles of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son to be born of a woman, so that he could be born under the law, in order to redeem those under the law, so that we would be adopted as sons. And because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts to shout, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, then you are also an heir of God through Christ. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to pray with me. Direct us now, gracious Lord, to hear or write your holy word. Assist your minister to preach and let the Holy Spirit teach. Let eternal life be found by all who hear the gospel sound. Amen. Memorable Christmas gifts. I think it's impossible for us to remember every Christmas gift that we've received over the years, but there are some that kind of stick out in our memory. Uh, For my wife and I, there's one. When we were first married, our first year, we were married. The best memorable gift, it wasn't the gift that we actually bought each other, but it was one of these little gifts that we put in our stockings for each other. You see, we had both noticed that each of us had toothbrushes when we would travel somewhere. We'd just stick those toothbrushes in a plastic bag. So we both got each other toothbrush holders for our toothbrushes. And for that, that was memorable for us because it was the thought behind it. And then three years ago, during the height of COVID and stay at home and all of that, we both bought each other the same gift, a comfy bathroom robe, right? How can you do stay at home without a comfy bathroom robe, right? We both got each other the same gift. It was memorable because of the thought behind it. Today we're focusing on God's gifts to us, the gift of his Son and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at God's Word and see why those things are so memorable to us, what they mean, and where do they come from and why they are there. Christmas gifts from God to us, the gift of his Son and the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul is writing to the Christians living in Galatia, which is in modern-day Turkey. That's the roof of the Middle East. And he had gone to that area and had preached the gospel to them, and a miracle happened. They actually believed it. They actually believed that Jesus was born of a woman, was born on this earth, who lived and died, lived a perfect life for them, died for them because of grace alone. And this is the the wonderful gift that they received. Forgiveness and salvation was By faith alone, they they took this all in and they actually believed it. This is a wonderful miracle that happened. And then the Apostle Paul had to go on. And some other preachers came. And some other preachers would say, you know, it's nice that uh, Jesus lived for us. We're not denying that he was a human being, that he died, that he rose again. But you're not really sure of your salvation unless you do things like not eat bacon. Forget the pork. You know, you guys have been worshiping on Sundays. We should actually be worshiping on Saturdays. If we really want to make God pleased with us, let's move it back to Saturday. And men, if you really want to please God, you should really be circumcised. You see, they took the meat and potatoes of our faith, which is Jesus Christ who lived and died and rose again for us, and they put a different food on the, on the plate, and, and made Jesus' life, death, and resurrection just a little seasoning on the side. But the main portion of that plate was what you did for God. It makes sense. How do you know that you're saved? Well, what did you do? Did you go to church? Do you read your Bible? Do you not curse and swear? It's so easy for us to think those are 
the marks of what it means to be a true Christian. Do you go to Bible study? Send your kids to Sunday school. Send your kids to a Christian day school. Send your kids to youth group. Come to Bible class on Thursday. Pray every day. So easy for us to think those things are the marks of, what, of true assurance of salvation. And the Apostle Paul has a, has a term for this. He calls it slavery. Slavery to the basic patterns of this world. The basic principles of this world is do and you will receive. Be nice, people will reciprocate. Be nice to God, he'll reciprocate to you. Behave, and he'll give you heaven. Act some like, sometimes like a Christian, and he'll reward you with heaven. That's the basic principles of the world, and Paul calls it slavery. Slavery in terms that it is something that binds to us and something we can't escape. If we're going to go under that principle of reciprocity, I think that's how you pronounce it, tit for tat, I do this for you, God, God, you'll do this for me, that's slavery. You know what it's like when you are, you're trying to be nice to someone and it doesn't matter what you do, you'll never please them? You'll never do enough for them to show any sort of warm feeling to them. Maybe they haven't let you know what their expectations are, or maybe they're keeping, shifting the goalpost on you all the time because they want to have control over you. God puts his expectations in the Bible and says, here it is. Perfect. Do this, Jesus says, and you will live. All the time, if you want this tit-for-tat relationship, God says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Don't set a standard that you're going to come up with, but be perfect. You know that one time that you shut your mouth and you were proud of yourself for not saying something? God saw the five other times you should have shut your mouth. That's what makes it slavery. That is not how God gives gifts. But today we celebrate God giving gifts. The gift of his son. He gives us the assurance of our salvation, the assurance of his love, not found in our obedience, but found in the little baby wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. Or as Paul says, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son to be born of a woman so that he would be born under the law in order to redeem those under the law so that we would be adopted as sons. God sent his son, his beloved son, his only begotten son, as we sang, to be born under the law, born under this relationship. You do this for God and God will do those things for you. Except Jesus did everything perfectly. Not only did he keep his, his mouth shut at that one time, he kept his mouth shut all of the time when it needed to be shut. And he was not hesitant to speak when the truth needed to be spoken. He was not hesitant to love, even when people weren't going to love him back. He lived a perfect life. He was born under the law that God put all of us under. And it wasn't a, 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 a something that bound him or enslaved him it was something that he could do completely and perfectly. And then, what did he do? He traded so that he would be our slave. He would be, take our place under a holy God who has justice and judgment for sin. I shared on social media a video of a, of a young woman witnessing to another person, talking about forgiveness. Why should God forgive you, she says. Well, if I ask him for it. And she, and she answered, well, you still did something wrong. Who's going to pay that punishment? Like if you get a speeding ticket, she said, and you ask the officer to forgive you and not give you a speeding ticket, somebody has to pay it. You, you broke the law. Jesus paid it on the cross for you. He paid the price. He redeemed you, as we talked about in confirmation the last couple of weeks. He paid the price. And it started with him. 
becoming a little baby in Bethlehem. Being wrapped in swaddling cloth, the immeasurable God, the all-powerful God, limits himself, human form. The divine nature of God takes on the human nature and walks among us as his brothers. And because of that, God adopts us as his sons, all of us, male and female. He adopts us as sons because sons have an inheritance in the Old Testament. Sons got the inheritance. And so God adopts us as sons. And what a beautiful picture that is of adoption. We are all born by default. We, we're not cho- we don't choose our biological parents, and we don't choose our biological children. But in adoption, that's different. Out of love, a mom and dad, by their own free, ch- free will, choose to take on a child and give them that status of son or daughter. In Jesus, God has given us this wonderful gift. He has adopted you and I as his sons. We receive that inheritance because his son paid the price for that inheritance. A perfect life, which gets heaven. He paid that for you, for me, so that we can confidently say that our father loves us. And that we'll be in heaven because of Jesus. That's a meaningful gift, is it not? The gift of his son for you. But God doesn't stop there. He gives us his Holy Spirit as well. He says, and because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts to shout, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, then you are also an heir of God through Christ. God sent his spirit into our hearts that we might say, Abba, Father. We would have this close, intimate relationship of a father and a son. And it's su- such a hard concept to talk about these days because biblical fathers, such a rare thing. Biblical fathers, those fathers who aren't, aren't just the spiritual heads of their families, but they're making sure their kids are hearing about Jesus at home and at church. Fathers who are holding themselves up to a spiritual standard of accountability and responsibility. It's such a rare thing. And fathers who show unconditional love to their children, whose children, in turn, are showing conditional love. Dad, you'll love me if you give me this. If you give me the keys to your car, then then I'll know you really love me. If you give me this gift, then I know you'll really love me. Kids who are always doing this conditional love with their fathers, fathers unconditionally loving their children. Like a, 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 I pictured like a lion. The lion is, is sitting there with the mane and the little cubs on there tugging on his ear, and the, and the lion is just stoic. We think of fathers when their, their kids are teens and they're, they're upset with their dads because of the, the, the re, everything he has, the regulations he puts on them, the expectations he has on them, and he just takes it like a, like a father with a little cub tugging on his ear. That's the relationship we have with our Heavenly Father. Sometimes when we're praying to God, it seems as if God and us are on the same wavelength. God, thank you for all of the things that you've given me. God, here are some, some things on my heart that I want to pray for. Sometimes our prayers to God are on different wavelengths. We're like the teenager that's upset with their dad because he's, he says he can't, they can't stay out till after 10. It's, it's unfair, God. It's unfair. Sometimes that's our demeanor when we talk to God, too. Because from someone from experience. I think two, two weeks ago on a Wednesday, I had another one of those muscle attacks in my back, and I couldn't move. I was trapped in the upper classroom. Just the thought of moving anywhere just was filled with ext- ex- extreme pain on the inside. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. My own family had to carry me home. It's not fair. You have a relationship with your Heavenly Father where you can be that bear cub tugging on his ear because he sent his son to die for you. 
And he will always stoically continue to do that. He doesn't treat us the way that we deserve. Instead, he treats us out of his grace and mercy, sends his Holy Spirit into our hearts to create faith and a faith that also responds by going to our Heavenly Father in good times and in bad and praying to him, Abba, Father. But we don't always feel a close connection to our Heavenly Father. The story is told of a parishioner, came to her pastor, came to and uh, said to him, Pastor, it just doesn't seem to work. No matter how much I pray, no matter how hard I try, I can't seem to feel close to my Lord. I think I'm losing my faith. And the minister, in great wisdom, said, look at my dog. My dog is obedient. He comes when I call him to come. He goes when I call him to go. He never makes a mess, never makes a fuss. He always tells me when he needs to go outside. When I'm walking outside, he's right there beside me. He is a pure delight. Now, <clears throat> see my toddler over there with paper in his mouth? Baby food all over his shirt. He cries all the time. In the middle of the night, keeps us up. He's putting paper in his mouth. Disobedient. That's going to get my inheritance. That's going to get, that child is going to get the estate. And it is like, that's how our Heavenly Father is with us. We are his sons. You are his sons, all of you, because of Jesus. It is not based on your obedience. Then why go to church then, we say? Why do we spend time in God's word? Why do we share God's word with our children? Because we need to be reminded of these wonderful gifts. These meaningful gifts that the God gives us, the gift of his son and the gift of faith by the Holy Spirit are things we take for granted. Even a 47-year-old pastor sitting up there in that classroom could take that for granted. You can take it for granted too. You have a heavenly Father who gives you gifts and loves you and gives you heaven because of Jesus. Those are gifts that keep on giving. Gifts we still need to be reminded of. Because we're still those disobedient kids. We've got baby food all over our shirts. We say things that we shouldn't say. We do things we shouldn't do. And when we do those things where we, we fall back into the pattern of the world, well, God, you should do something for this because of all the things that I've done. We need to be reminded of a gracious God who doesn't treat us as we deserve, but instead gives us gifts. The gift of his Son. The gift of the Holy Spirit the gift of salvation, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of joy and peace, all those things we sang about yesterday and today are all ours because God became human, took on flesh, was that little baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. God's wonderful gift for you. Amen. Thank you for joining us today here on Emmanuel Cares, the podcast. We encourage you to find out more about us on our webpage at emmanuelshirley.com. There's Bible connections. There's a podcast called Casting Nets. There's opportunities for you to get involved to help us to be a country church that cares. Emmanuel means God with us. When you leave today knowing that your God is with you because he cares for you.